Hi, and welcome along to the All Guns Blazing podcast with my man DT in the building, behaving. Yeah, kind of, <laughs> kind, of kind of. Yeah, I'm all right. Kind I'm of, good. kind of, kind of. What are you looking at me like that for? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, going, I'm, 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 I'm literally going to stop asking that question because it's yeah. a bit of a ridiculous question because you never behave, right? Yeah, so. it says you a couple of weeks ago that weren't be- behaving. I'm good oh. now. I'm good. But you know what? Um, of course, this window, or should I say this window, I said this window, this week was all about the transfer window. Transfer mm-hmm. window closed. Dennis Suarez yep. from Barcelona. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the way and you say that with a sense of, it's because that's all it was. But Denis Suarez from Barcelona, um, RB Leipzig taking uh, Emil Smith-Rowe. Smith-Rowe out on loan. Mm. Interesting one. We'll talk about that as well. Yeah. Um, and in the, Eddie and Ketter nearly went as well to Augsburg, but Arsenal yeah. deciding to hold on to him in the end because um, they didn't get any of their other targets in, mm. which was Perisic and Carrasco. What did you make of the transfer window? For, as regards to Arsenal, I mean, Denis Suarez, first um, of all, is that a good signing? It can be. Only time will tell. It doesn't matter who you sign, you could spend £100 million on a player. And until they prove themselves mm. in the Premier League and in your side, you can't say whether it's a good signing or not. We've seen before players that have gone to various clubs for big money and you've gone, hmm. Mm. So, um, given the deal that it is, loan... And possibly signing for what around about twenty to twenty five million or something like that. They're talking about, about the kind of figures. Probably about seventeen to twenty million. They say, aren't they? It, it will kind of tell how he gets on if he hits the ground running and has an unbelievable last four months of the season. Then we'll be looking like we've just got ourselves a bargain for like twenty mm. odd million. Um, but it's the defence, man. Mm. And again, he's a he's a he's another midfielder. I mean, we're being mm. told that he can play out wide. Um, obviously, he's played under Unai Emery in the past. He yeah. played under him at Sevilla. Yeah. Um, Emery really, really liked him. Obviously, likes the player, trusts the player. Mm-hmm. Um, and we do lack width. Yeah. But he's not an out-and-out out wide player, is no, he? He's yeah. again a makeshift. No. Um, he can play in various positions. He can even play as kind of like that false nine as a striker or in that number 10 role. Um, but he's not that out-and-out winger that gets you off your seat, that, Mm. you know, that kind of player that just gets your bum off and just... Yeah. Oh, it's just... And it was the Perisic thing... That would have been a great signing if we signed him, wouldn't it? you know what? That wasn't really exciting me so much. He is a great player and everything else and and the rest of it. And some, you know, clubs in England have looked at him over the last couple of years and everything else. Well, Man United wanted to buy him, you know. Um, But... He's 29 years old, and when you was weighing up the deal between either him or Carrasco, the Carrasco one excited me more, based mm. on the fact he was 25. There's there was a lot more, I felt within yeah. that, and plus when well, I, I think, watched I just him, think I think Carrasco, I think um, Perisic is a, a way better player than Carrasco. Carrasco on his day, it's clear that he's what he's got within him. I watched him tear us apart when he was playing for Monaco. In the Champions League, remember at the mm, Emirates, he scored yeah. the third goal in injury he's good, time. He's a very good and player. He's a quality player. And he's him. a winger. He's and a when natural you see him in winger, the Champions League final against Madrid <clears> that time, yeah, and he was unreal. And then um, he's obviously gone to China for whatever reason. <laughs> so we kind of money. <laughs> we kind of know what reason, but yeah, it's um, and I, I just think that there's something you know exciting about him, and maybe mm. Unai Emery could have got it out of him. Per- Perisic is more the um, established one, should we say? But either one of them would have been good. But the yeah. one that excited me would have been Carrasco. Maybe they might go back for Carrasco in the summer. Maybe possibility because it's clear that he doesn't like it in in China, and apparently him and his family are not happy or settled. Mm. And you know, maybe something's been struck where we said, look, you're just gonna have to grin and bear it for another four mm. or five months. You're gonna have to take that huge salary and just smile. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's a hard life, isn't it? But I don't know. But even the player that excites me and I've looked at for a, a couple of months now is um, Pepe. Nicolas Pepe. And like, he's... Uh, oh, I'm I, ge- I genuinely think he's out of our reach now. I think that if we were going to get him, it should have been this month. Mm. Not last month, sorry. But um, well, they said they weren't going to sell him. Yeah, I think... Well, this is, this is the thing, isn't it? It's hard to get players in in January because... 
basically, if you want a top quality player who's performing well, normally that player's performing well at his team mm. at that current time, you're going to have to pay a king's yeah. ransom to get him away from, from that club. Yeah, well, the best way of looking at it is what real significant signings were there by anyone in January? Well, it wasn't any, was it? There wasn't. There were, most that, of them were loans as well. I know that Newcastle broke their transfer record to bring a guy in. Miguel um, Almiron, who we yeah. were looking at first. Yeah, but um, they brought him in. Obviously, Batshuayi's come back to the Premier League. Loan. So that was a loan deal. Um, so it just shows that there wasn't a lot mm. really going on at the moment. And um, I've kind of... January's opened my eyes to a lot of things. Obviously, at the beginning of the month, you're angry, you hear there's no money and everything else. And then I've spoke to certain people that actually know what they're talking about in terms of the, you know, this this whole budget that we're on and you can't go above it and everything else. And I realised that basically Emery's hands are tied and that Kroenke could genuinely give 200 million to Emery and he wouldn't be able to spend it this month. In January, he wouldn't have been able to. But the mess because of the that we're in. Oh, no, don't get me wrong. The mess, mm. the mess. No, listen, the mess is because of the past regime. Kroenke's as culpable for that as anyone else because he allowed it to happen. He's the owner of the club. Mm. And you allowed these people to waste money. And let's be real, they've wasted money. There's a few players in there where you look at and go, value, value, Lacazette, Aubameyang, value all day long. No problems whatsoever. But look how much money... They just filtered away. You think mm. 35, nearly 40 million on Mustafi. They're alone. You're giving Petacek, he's on over 100 <coughs> grand, right? He's our second choice goalkeeper. He's on more money than our first choice goalkeeper. Um, you think of um, all the other players that have got high wages, big contracts and everything else. And yeah, that goes to Meza Ozil. Mkhitaryan on 200,000 pound. Money was literally just flitted away. So we've had money to spend, but it's not been spent right. It's been spent awfully, really, really bad. And we're now paying the price for that. Or should I say Emery's paying the price for that. And mm. in January, we couldn't do anything. And like I said, Kroenke could have changed his whole entire perception of everything and gone, you know what? Let's do it. 200 million, go. No, you couldn't have done anything. Couldn't have spent anything. This summer... And before the season started, me and you have done podcasts and everything. And you've said to me about Kroenke and everything. I said, we need at least three windows. All right? This window coming in the summer is the most important in recent history of Arsenal Football Club, in my opinion. Because the new Emirates deal starts. That's on the stadium and shirts. Adidas kicks in. Don't know whether there's Champions League money on top of that as well. <laughs> well, okay. but, no, but I'm saying there's potentially that there as well. There's potentially that. There's um, player selling, who you might get rid of if you're going to get rid of Ozil. Mohamed El Nenny is a name that I've been hearing that's going to go. Then you've got players coming off your wage bill that are taking ridiculous amounts of money. Petr Cech, uh, maybe Ramsey. Lauren Koscielny, Aaron Ramsey. You're talking... Those players there alone that you're talking about is over half a million pound in weekly wages, that can pay three players, two free players, one top draw mega signing and a couple of really good, decent players to fight for a place in the 11. And like I said, there's no hiding place for anybody this summer. There's no excuses. There's no rules. Mm. There's nothing. We've got up to £200 million to spend in the window Without Stan Kroenke putting he, money if in. If he gives, allows access to all of that money that's going to be available. Yeah. It, He's not really done that no, before in the past, No, has he? but what I'm saying is, is that we've got that money available without Stan Kroenke having to put his hand in his pocket. But he's never put his hand no, in his I pocket No, I know that. I know that. But let's, but let's just say, Robert, <coughs> right? Let's say Stan Kroenke, say, arguments say the figure is 200 million. We've got into the Champions League and everything else. And Stan says, you know what? You can take that 200 million. Go and do what <laughs> you need to do. No, uh, no, because it's not his money. You've got to remember that. It's not his money. So it is feasible is to say... Money. Well, no, because... It's, it's his what, club. No, I know that. But what I'm saying is it's not his personal money. It's not out of his pocket. Right. So... So it's feasible for him to say, this is what you you can have because it's not coming out of my pocket. I'm not losing nothing in that sense. Go and do what you need to do and don't make the same mistakes as the, the, the past people that were here. 
And Unai Emery got 200 million. He went out and strengthened the team in all kinds of... Spent 80, 90 to 100 million on a centre-back. Bought in um, a left-back, a winger, etc., etc. Brought these players in. Would we be moaning at Stan Kroenke if he brought in... I, I, I can't see... No, I know Stan where you're Kroenke coming. No, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. £200 million pound available. He's not done that since he's been here. Because we've never had it. We've never really I, I had it. And I, what I, you I, got, I don't know, about, I don't no, know if we've never really had remember, it. We've had funds. I think from 2015, I think it was, 2014-15, is when funds started to become available. And he went, here you go. Here's 42, whatever it was, million pound for Meza Ozil. Now, five years ago, that 42 million pound... How much would that be in today's market? He said there's money there available for Ozil. That's only because we sold Alexis Sanchez. I understand that. That's what I'm saying. I, I, I'm not convinced. I mean, I, obviously, we'll have to wait until the summer. I see a lot of people getting excited and saying, don't worry. Come the summer. No, no, no. I know Unlimited what you, I know what you're funds no, available. No, 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 no. What, I can't see what it. You're I can't, saying, what you're in saying. the past history of how this guy has operated since he's been at this club, yeah, there'll be... Possibly lots of money freed up and available. Yeah. Right. I just don't think that all of that money is going to be available to the manager. We've just never had that. No, situation. I know what you're saying. What I think the difference this time round is that the manager has not hidden it away. No, it, no. Was Arsene Wenger actually a very, very good person for um, Stan Kroenke? In that he always took it. He took it on behalf of the owner. We learned, of course. That article from the Swiss Ramble, where he said that, you know, basically Stan Kroenke's never put any of his own money in the club, mm -hmm. right? But Arsene Wenger, I think this window, if that would have been Arsene Wenger in charge of this window, he would have been said things like, uh, we're looking for quality. If quality is available, we will go and buy it. But he wouldn't have revealed the fact that all we can do is do loans. He wouldn't have revealed that. No. Right? Whereas Unai Emery said, yeah, I've, all I've got is loans. That's it. Got no money. Got he, he let the cat out of the bag. Yeah. I like the transparency. I like. Yeah, that. yeah. But, so do but, I. So do I. So <laughs> that's what I'm saying, though. With Arsene Wenger, we start to see why you know he was in charge for so long because you know he really did a great protection mm. job Look, I, when it came comes to the owner. So I'm not convinced <laughs> that come this summer because a lot of those times when cash has been available there to buy, let's just dig a bit deeper into what happened around that. So the whole thing of buying, um, you know, Aubameyang and that was because of the sale of Alexis Sanchez and the fact that they knew that fans were going to be in a meltdown. They had to do something. Mm. They managed to get Aubameyang, you know. I, I don't know. I just, I'm hoping that these new guys are going to be, you know, they're more transfer savvy. The old regime that we had weren't transfer savvy. It helps, um, hence why we signed so many poor players. We've been lucky getting certain players. When we've got Lacazette, remember, he was on his way to Atletico Madrid. Mm. It's only because we they had a transfer ban we were able to slip in and get him, yeah. right? I want to see an Arsenal that starts to get more aggressive in the transfer market. If we want... That's why I kind of like this Perisic thing, the way they kind of... Even though it was only going to be a loan, but I like the way they kind of manoeuvred in. Mm. And got him to, you know, put in a transfer request. And that was an aggressive move. Mm. The only problem is they had no money to back it up. You know what I mean? <laughs> right? But it was an aggressive move. That is, for me, how Arsenal should be behaving yeah, yeah, yeah. in the transfer market. But, the, listen... You know what the difference is? And <clears throat> this is what I feel and think. But you talk about we need to sell players to buy players. This time, I don't think we need to sell anyone to buy anyone because no, the money uh, is coming from other revenues. No, we still... The only players... No, 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 no. no, no. no the only players that we are looking to sell... Would be players that are just not part we're of the squad. We're still doing the same thing because we're right now we're saying to Aaron Ramsey, who's been one of our best players this season, we've said to him, you can go. He's going to... One of our best players, one of our most experienced players who knows what Arsenal's all about, is going to Juventus at the end of the season. We've allowed him to leave because of money. There is no way on this earth we should have been allowing no, I don't, Aaron I, Ramsey. I don't, I don't think it's because of money. Aaron, I think, Ram, Aaron Ramsey should possibly be a captain of this team look, now. I, I don't think it's anything to do with money. The of course simple, it is. No, 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 no. Because Arsenal were going to pay the money. They had a contract in place. That's already been established. Yeah. And then Unai Emery's came in, obviously. He's watched the team over the first few months or so. And he said, 
Aaron Ramsey is <coughs> not a part of my plans. Why does he play every week now? Why why has he been well, playing? It's only been the last couple of Wait, hold on a minute. It's only been the last couple of games that Aaron Ramsey started. Apart from that, he's always been on the bench. He's not figured, been a part of it. He's been one of our main men no, but this what, season. But I bet lot, you he plays no, against listen, Man City. But a lot of his performances have come off on the bench. Yeah, but he's uh, the one that's while all the first teams being rested, Aaron Ramsey was the one going to Blackpool in the FA Cup and playing in the Carabao and stuff only like because that. Because we those times we know he's leaving, but has he no, or, but has he or not been one of our main men this season? He has played well. He right? has. And but what I'm saying is, but what I'm saying is, is Unai Emery has clearly said he does not fit the style that I want. I can get, I can in, manage him. He said I'm going to build now. the team around him when he came. Yes, in. but then he's obviously watched him and then said no. It's nothing to do with no. that, in my opinion. To, to me, it boils down to money. If you want to build a team, or not forget team, squad, yeah. that is going to win the Premier League, you need brilliant players but in that squad. But they've obviously looked at Aaron Ramsey and said he's not worth there 300 grand a week. He's not. Thank you. Money. But he's not worth that. Money. But he's not worth that. Well, they weren't going to pay him 300 grand a week. Well, the, they, I think the contract the, I think was agreed. I think the agreement was, was round about 200 grand a week. But because of the mess that we're in financially, because of the fact we know that no money's going to be coming in, we've had to sacrifice Aaron Ramsey no, yet there, again. There's a lot more going on behind the scenes than you know about. Yeah, trust you, me. And on, their you, agent, yeah, you, you, his you, agent is half of the reason for this. You know that his agency every got was an floating agent. around... The idea to Arsenal that Aaron Ramsey, that Manchester United are involved in everything. That's common. Every single agent on the face of this earth, they represent, they don't represent Arsenal. No, no. They represent their client. But his agent has messed him up. Every single agent does that. Every And in his case, he would have had suitors, proper, genuine suitors that were, as we see, he's not going to, you know, play for, I don't know, Reading or one in the team. He's going to Juventus. So a player that's good enough to go to Juventus, we are letting go. Juventus, who are miles better than us, we're letting him go, right? It's a mess. And yet again, we're having to do that, sell, get rid of our best players. And how many times are down the years have we done that? Anytime we do have any little bit of money to spend, that's how we're able to do it. We have to let somebody go. You, you, look, you study it. Every time a, a top player's come in, it's normally been on the back of... Yeah, I know that. Some top player going out and they're like, oh, gosh. But I think Denis Suarez is Ramsey's replacement. Possibly he is. Because he plays... Is he as good as Ramsey? We'll find out. At right, you know, when you... You know, listen, we are going to find out and it's a, he, he could turn out to be a really good player. He plays Emery But we've got style. our Ramsey already. Play, we know he's good. No, right? but he plays Emery style. Uh, it, um, Suarez is a ball carrier. Ramsey's Basic, not a ball carrier. Yeah. But basically, if he's Aaron Ramsey's replacement, basically we're going out and saying he's cheaper. No, but at the same time, he also plays Emery's style. But Emery's lights at Ramsey. That's why he's been figuring yes, so much. Yes, but he much. obviously works with him every single day of the week. This guy's we not, don't. This so guy's not even an out-and-out out winger, is yeah, he? But, no, I know he's not an... Um, Sanchez, where you get Sanchez? Suarez. We do it. We do it. Jesus. <laughs> well, that's just another You're lucky one. I corrected that's you there. An, uh, that's another one who wins. But, um, no, but he plays more to Unai Emery style, which is ball carrier. He could be a great player. But again, as I said, it's we could be sitting here in a money. year's time doing this podcast and going, wow, what a brilliant piece of business that was getting could Aaron be. Ramsey off the wage could bill be. and bringing in Dennis Well. We or we could be sitting here in a year's time going, why the hell did we get about, hit rid of Aaron Ramsey? Or why <laughs> have we brought that Suarez in? He's rubbish. Or... <coughs> but look, we don't know, do we? Like I said, we could go out and buy Koudabale tomorrow for £100 million and he could flop in the Premier League. Yeah, but... No, you but could is say, it... you could say that for a lot of players. Yeah, no, but, but I'm saying every, yeah, every transfer mm. is a gamble. But quality every... players... On the whole, when you go out and you buy top quality players, you know what you're getting, right? Yes, they can flop, but look at some of the top quality players we bought recently, Lacazette and, and Abamia. Yeah. And yeah, they've yeah, come yeah. in. I mean, all right, you could argue that Mkhitaryan hasn't been as effective as we... Even him, though, he's not been bad. He scored, you know, he's a mm. goal-scoring midfielder. So when you go out and you buy quality... You know, rather than your... You get what you pay for. Or ninnies and people like that where you, you know, we've got what we've paid for with him, isn't it? He's, yeah. he's a utility player. He's done okay, but he's not going to win you the title, is he? He no. wouldn't be at City. He's not good he wouldn't be at Liverpool. He wouldn't be at, you know. No. no. So that, that's what I'm saying. I mean, and for me, it's all about trying to win titles, you know, and the investment has to come. You know, I, I think... Uh, 
as well. I think the owners of, I think uh, the team around uh, Arsenal done a great PR thing on a lot of fans as well. Got every all the fans, as I said, got all their fans and their calculators out. Oh, the wages. Oh, he's on no, no, 100 no. and he's see... 75 grand. At... Wait, what other did club? You, did, did you, you see did... the um, Did you see the quotes from Josh Cronkey? Because he had a meeting with Unai Emery mm. um, last week or the week before something or another. They went out for dinner and everything and there was everyone connected to the club was all there and Josh was saying it was really good to look into people's eyes and to see what the vision is and where they want to be. And he said, <laughs> I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but he said that Unai Emery could get Arsenal into the Champions League final. Now, <laughs> I sat there, when I first said this, right, the first thing that came out of my mouth, right, was we need to qualify for the Champions League first. You probably don't even realise. Right, secondly... We need a lot more <laughs> than we've got right now to be anywhere near the Champions exactly. League final. Do you think we're getting to a Champions League final with that defence? Are you uh, mad? And, and again, what you know, that again, for me, it looks to be an error for me, not bringing in any defenders. You know, uh, I know it's hard to get players at this time of year. I know... They're gambling that, on what they got. But... <sighs> gambling You know, Socrates time. is out till the end of February. He's been our best... Centre half right. this season. We don't know when Koscielny's going to come back. He's had this bruise He's back draw. for the Man City game. Is that what they're claiming? Yeah. Okay, all right, training. fair enough. Well, he's if back he's back training. for that. But we're very light in that area. No Bellerin, of course, as we know. Yeah. Um, That'll go into next season. Bellerin. Yeah, and we're going in to play Man City first up. That's a nice, easy game, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> a team that stretches you out wide and Sane and you know Sterling what? running out. Do you know I'm what? worried. I'm what, worried. Um, oh. I, I see you post something the other day um, about what your formation would be. I've done my preview um, this week for the thing. And there's a lot of debate over what way we should set up in this game. Like, I went with a 4 1 2 1 2, which <laughs> is like a diamond. Um, yeah, well, I, I, and it was it's be a so basically a flat four, based on the fact that I don't think that we've got many defenders to try a free, although a lot of people are saying do a free. Um, you sit Terrera in front of the four. You play two other midfielders in front of Terrera. Then you play the creative player in front of those two, and then Abamyang and Lacazette up front as a two. And I think we need to go and take the game to Man City and just go with no fear. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's better than sitting back and getting slapped six or seven goals like we did against Liverpool. Just why not actually play on the front foot and we then tried try to and play on the front? We tried to play on the front foot against Liverpool. We got to be five one. No, no, we we, we no, can't defend. That was calamitous against Liverpool. The, we big, can't the biggest defend. issue, the biggest issue, right? And I, I've got a feeling that Mustafi and Koscielny are going to be the centre back pairing. My biggest issue with these two is that neither of them are leaders. Neither of them command the defence. It's very clear. Exactly. The reason why Lauren Koscielny was man of the match against Chelsea was because of Socrates. Because he was the one that was literally pulling <coughs> every part of that. Now, I know that Chelsea's attack is not that great, but you still got to be able to defend. They've still got world-class players. They've still got, got Eden players. Hazard. Now, Hazard, Pedro. he was able to orchestrate that perfectly against Manchester United first 20 minutes we were in complete control of the game dominating <laughs> possession everything was going all right all that was missing was that little piece of cutting edge around the box that was just missing but you felt as the game would go on it would start to open up Socrates goes off injured within five minutes we're two nil down simple facts mm. we were two nil down it was nil nil when Socrates went off and within less than 10 minutes, we're losing 2 0. Now he's not here till the end of February. Exactly. Because so what was, was why didn't we sign a defender? No, but what I was saying is, is that when Koscielny and Mustafi play together, what happens is, is that instead of both of you going together or both of you dropping, one goes, one drops, and then the left back's this way, the right back's that way. The whole line is over mm. the place. And whoever yeah. the midfielders are or the other team are just going ping, one ball over the top. Mm. And a player like Lukaku So why was, didn't we buy a defender? He right? obviously thinks what, what, that he's got enough there. Why, why he, right? We bought Denis Suarez, right? Mm -hmm. If anything, midfield, 
we got a lot of midfielders. We got Gwenduzi there. We got Ramsey there. Urzil. Yep. Mkhitaryan's coming back soon. He's back in training. Um, you know, we well. could have kept Smith Rowe in. You know, there's lots of midfielders. Torreira, yeah. Xhaka. But we bought another midfielder. Yeah. Right. Why didn't we go say even if we said you know what Denis Suarez waiting till the summer? Right now, our biggest problem, which every Arsenal fan knows, is in defence. Why didn't we go and get... K.O. was there and available at... Um, I know he's not everybody's cup of tea, he, but he's a vastly he experienced... He turned down Juventus. It's, so, so they say. I think a lot of that's to do with more with wages is what I'm hearing. But the fact that Juventus were even interested in him... I knew you were when this. they've got... <laughs> no, when they've got, you know... Arguably some of the best defenders ever, you know, in Cialini, Benucci and guys like that. Why didn't Arsenal maybe try and go and get somebody of that experience or any, or somebody else mm. to bring in in the defensive area? I, I'm really baffled by this uh, because maybe, maybe he's defensively this season, that is where we've fallen down. Yeah, I know. We, we all know that. We all know that. So if we all know that, why haven't we... Don't ask me. Ask them. I don't get it. Ask them. I really em don't get this. Emery's obviously... <clears throat> the club have looked at, you know, Socrates and went, you know what? February's a short month. Yeah. We're, we're missing a game in the middle of it One anyway. of those games is against... Yeah, I know that. But in, in the middle as well, we've also got a weekend off now. Got because two, we're got not Euro in the we got, FA we got Europa League. I know we should beat Bate yeah, Borisov. What I'm saying is, I think they may have looked at the fixtures and gone, you know what? Bar the Man City game, we can deal without soccer. The, even the, you know, even against um, Cardiff mm -hmm. the other night, That's if that minutes. would have been a better yeah. players playing up front, they would have been a couple of goals up. Yeah, we needed defenders. I don't understand this. That's why I think that's why I think a lot of people haven't even been excited about the Denis Suarez thing because it's not nothing on him. It's just like, yeah, we got There's so many other players like that in the midfield. I forgot Iwobi as well. You can throw into that. Why do we need to go and get another one, right? What we need is somebody to hold it steady at the back. That's where it needs help. That's where it needs support. Why not try and get like a one of those defenders who's a bit versatile who can also play it as a right back as well? We know it's a problem. Mm. We've got three right backs there and I'm, none of them really are proper... Yeah, Carl Jenkins is a proper right back, but, you know, he's not really played much. You've got Lish Dino, who's been a disaster. And um, you've got Maitland Niles, Niles, who's not really... That's, uh, that role doesn't you know really what? fit him. He's, he's got pace, but he's not got I the got discipline a, to play that role. I've got a feeling that Jenkinson's going to start against Man City. <sighs> up against Sterling, up against Leroy Sane. I hope he can have a great game. It could be... I genuinely it could be a, It could be a turning point if he did, but we're taking a massive gamble... Why didn't we go and try and fill that area? I think or we why did. Didn't we try and fill I think it? we did. With who? The, we... the lad from PSG. He's not a right back. Yes, he's he, another midfielder. He, play, he plays he's... right back. No, he, he play... doesn't. Under Unai Emery, he played right wing back. He's a filling in. He as played a... under right. filler. Right. filler. It's like Unai Emery was the one that brought him into the PSG team. And Unai Emery is the one that played him the most. He's, a and he was, he's an attacking Robbie, midfielder. Robbie, 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 I'm telling you, Unai Emery used him as a right wing back at PSG. I know that. And he what, played very well there. But again, it's just like bringing in another Maitland Niles. I'm, I'm you, on about... No, but you, you just said, in, you just said, maybe someone that's a bit versatile. Versatile, that can play versatile in that they can play centre back or right no, back. No, but he can play right back. And that right, and, and he's very clear. You can't play centre right. back here. You couldn't have a no, free. No, 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 no. You're no, not going to play a no, free and have what him I'm in saying, But what I'm saying is, is that it's clear have... it's clear that Emery for some reason now wants to play free at the back and wants wing backs right. so the reason why he wanted him was to play the same way that he played when he was at PSG but he's not the defensive guy we need no I know but I'm we saying need, the right I'm, I'm back talk, position I'm talking about somebody who can play as a centre primarily what we needed was a centre back and then somebody who can fill in in other positions so he can do you know who can fill in on the right hand side who Mustafi well, he but plays he, there for Germany. Then who's going to play centre off? That's the problem. We ain't got no one. Yeah, I mean, this, uh, well, and with the transfer window, we didn't. We're buying another midfielder. I don't get it. I don't get it. But I don't know. Look, listen. <coughs> who knows, man? Who City knows? We're, we're either gonna <laughs> we're either gonna walk out of the Etihad on uh, Sunday, and we're gonna have absolute meltdowns, and there's gonna be iconic images of troops. Well, I don't think there'll be meltdowns um, because like, you know I think the thing is that a lot of people are expecting us to get battered. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, if you Josh Cronkey's going to have a lunch 
and talking about getting into Champions League finals, you've got to surely know that when you go to play, you know, a team like Manchester City, you've got to have the proper players to win that. What are you going to do if we win? I'll be, over I know, I'll be absolutely overjoyed. Be? But it, it won't be because of... Um, you know, the fact that we strengthen in the right areas as far as I'm concerned. Dennis Suarez, man you know? of the match pending. The interesting <laughs> thing, the interesting thing about tomorrow, about um Sunday, is that you've got two Josh um and, and Stan Kroenke, or should I say Stan, he owns the lot. Oh. He's got two major games. You may not know about one of them, but yeah. he's got two major games. I wonder games, which one right? he's gonna be at. <laughs> in the morning, it starts off with uh, you know, in the morning, his time over there in the States. It's going to kick off with um, Arsenal going to take on Man City. Huge game, although he probably won't even watch, but huge game. Then in the evening, his LA Rams goes into the Super Bowl final, which is, you know, a big, big deal. And funny enough, like I did an interview on CNN the other day and, and uh, they sent me the, the article. Name dropping. We posted it on on, on Twitter as well. Um, they, had a, they, they spoke to like me, Amy Lawrence. They, it was a really good article. Um, I'll try and see if I can put the link in the description as well. And um, the contrast with Stan Kroenke in LA to Stan Kroenke in London is unbelievable. <clears throat> in LA, Stan Kroenke is loved. Stan Kroenke is a hero. In London, you know, <laughs> we all know in London what, you know, the guy said to me, um, he was, he was doing the, uh, Tom, who was doing the article, he said to me, um, what would his approval rating be? He goes, you know that you give approval rating for the president in America. He goes, what would be the approval rating for Stan Kroenke uh, percentage wise in London? I said, it'd probably be about 1%. I've not really ever found anybody who's been in favour of him. Really. <clears throat> and the article was was was, was interesting, and I'll see, see and grab a a couple of um, interesting bits from it. Right, um, first of all, he was talking about because he asked me, he goes, "Are there Arsenal fans that want the Rams to win tomorrow? Do you want the Rams to win? You don't." Well, I said to him that I go, I went to a game. This is no lie. I went to a game the other day, and there was a guy he had on a Patriots hat. And he goes, I'm wearing this because I want the Patriots to beat the Rams, right? So, you know, which was which was a uh, which was a bit unbelievable. No, pe um, there's there's some people that are saying that if the Rams win, obviously they get this massive payout, and it mm. might actually filter down to us. So I was like, behave yourself. It's like scraps <laughs> in it. Please, sir. Please, sir. No, no, we're bigger than the Rams. End well, of story. Not, not in his eyes, we're not. No, I don't care about his eyes, right? We are bigger than the LA Rams. We're bigger fan base, bigger club. End of story. They play with a shitty egg-shaped ball. I don't care about no <laughs> Super Bowl. I don't care about Beyonce or whoever comes out and sings songs at half time. I do rate, I rate the Super Bowl. Though. Ah, sod the Super Bowl, it, man. I rate nah, it. I rate nah, it. I do, fuck man. the no, Super Bowl. No, 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 no. I hope that the he's way, sitting there the tomorrow they... with tears in his eyes, absolutely <laughs> wounded, because then he might feel a percentage of how we felt over his reign in charge at Arsenal. Listen, in the article, right? In the article, it says, with the Rams... <laughs> this guy. Right? Listen, listen, I'll just tell you guys. With the Rams, Kroenke finds himself on the brink of American Sporting Summit. A win away um, a, a win away from a championship three years after he helped engineer the team's move from St. Louis to Southern California. At Arsenal, the American is um, viewed increasingly as a man who's overseen the club's wayward drift. Right, so you know, what do the fans of St. Louis think about him? They hate him, yeah, <laughs> because he took the club. But the fans of LA, well, obviously, because he's literally just him. dropped in the middle of LA, built a billion odd pound stadium that looks like it's meant to be what did they say it was bigger than the um, the complex itself? I see some, I read something the other day, and I was just like, holy shit. The complex itself is bigger than. It's huge. I went down like, when, I, when I was in LA. They um, some guys took me down to the plot. They showed right. me it's huge. Also in this article, it says the Rams. It would seem is Kronky's crown jewel. Are you trying to wind me up? I'm just giving you the what's in the is article, this guy right? Trying to wind me in up. In 2016, he uprooted the franchise from his native Missouri to bring the Rams back to their original home in Los Angeles. The move left fans in St. Louis bitter. But the NFL's power brokers celebrated the league's return to the country's 
um, second biggest market. Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones lauded Kroenke for having the vision, resources, inspiration and creativity to create the right setting for the NFL um, in Los Angeles, right? Um, Bill Plaschke, a sports columnist for the uh, Los Angeles Times, gushed in August that Kroenke was the Rams MVP. He never heard him be the Arsenal's MVP. He gets Los Angeles. He understands its fans. He Yo, knows what works. I'm going home, man. <laughs> I'm just telling I'm you. I'm going home. This is the difference. I'm going home. He knows what's work. Um, and man, he's working it, Plashy. Do bro. these guys have Twitter? <laughs> Oh, I'm Send sure. me their ads. Let me let me have I'm a little sure, chat with I'm, them. I'm sure they. I'm sure they have. A, you know. Um, nah, nah, <laughs> no, 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 you know, no, uh, no, no. When Stan Kroenke took over Arsenal, right? We were going through one of the toughest periods in the history of Arsenal with the stadium move and everything else. We were losing our best players. And at that point, Stan Kroenke could have endeared himself to every Arsenal fan by saying, "You know what." Times are really tough. We need to steady this ship. I'm going to put my money in my own pocket so that we don't lose our best players. We don't lose, you know, the Fabregas's. We lost Hleb, who was an unbelievable player at that time. And you think of all that, mm. you know, when we had to get rid of Adebayo to Man City. Remember, Adebayo didn't want to leave Arsenal. He was forced out of the door and told, if you don't leave, mm. you're going in the reserves. This was, this was this was so, interesting. So what I'm saying is, if, that, if Stan Kroenke would have, from the very beginning, said, right, I need to put some money into the club, steady it, we're not losing our best players, we're going to maintain what we need to, but bear with us that over the next few years while we move into the stadium, it's a progression, it's a, you know, a new start and everything. The fans would have bared with it, gone with it, mm. and, and appreciated the work that he'd done, but he literally came in, said, I'm not putting no money in, we're losing all our best players... You've now got to get us in the Champions League because I still need to keep making money. I'm going to take three million a year out and everything. And when we do AGMs and stuff, I'm going to ignore every single one of you. I'm going to let my little sidekicks here like Chips Keswick and all that do things like this. Remember when Chips Keswick mm. done that to the fans? Well, look, let me... Uh, let me, let me uh, that we're all talking noise Let me also that. tell nah, you... You're, you're it, winding me up. I'm you not are. winding... It's the article. A spokesman for Arsenal pushed back on the suggestion that the owner isn't committed to the club by saying that Kroenke's son, Josh, who sits on the club's board, has attended a number of the team's matches in his father's stead. What, whether, this season? How many that, this season? Right, whether that's this season or not, I last don't know. Last season, right? we, already know, right. <laughs> we already know that last season, Josh moved, got an apartment in London for six months. Well, I remember you. Were, I moved. remember on this show, you were there going, Josh, Josh. No, Josh I turned around and right. said, so I turned, right, no, Josh hold on. What did I actually say? I said, Josh is here. If, if he actually deals with everything, then maybe he could be completely different to his father. If his father turned around and said, you take over Arsenal, I'm going to stay with the Rams. Right, then let's see what Josh can do because the only thing right, that wait, I can wait. say, wait, no, before you start reading up your crap to wind me it's up not more. Crap, this is no, facts. listen, no, to me it's crap, it's not facts, <laughs> right? The the differences with Josh is that when he came here for five, six months, yeah, he literally came in, saw the mess that had happened, and went, right, Arsene Wenger, bye bye. Mm. Right. And that that's another thing. We found out a week ago that Arsene Wenger and all his people around him were paid off over seventeen million pounds. Mm. Of, well, he's, well he's, hold on a minute. His contract was oh, ended early, isn't it? Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Apparently, Arsene left of his own accord, didn't he? He decided that it was time. Oh, yeah. No, because he was sacked. That's why mm. Arsene Wenger was sacked. And he was told very clearly, you've got two choices. You either make this really bad for yourself and dig your heels in and don't want to go. And we're going to have to do public sacking. You're going to leave with your tail between your legs. No fanfare, no nothing. Or we can make out that this has been a nice agreement. We'll pay you off and you can go off into the sunset a hero. And he chose mm. that option. If Arsene Wenger loved the club so much, yeah, why are you taking that payment? You took enough out of us anyway. That money they gave him was our centre-back. The spokesman also argued that nah. despite being... And hold on, hold on. Arsene Menger's still wearing our clothes. <laughs> Have you seen pictures of him lately? Where, give our clothes back. <laughs> the spokesman... Also argued, this guy, des man. despite being subject to financial fair play rules, Arsenal has invested heavily in new players. 
including last January's acquisition of star striker Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, who was signed for a club record £55 million. Stan and Josh Cronkey have been clear with everyone at the club and our fans that their ambition is for Arsenal to compete for and win the top trophies in the game. This includes the Premier League and Champions League, said Mark Janella, Arsenal's communications and community affairs oh, director. Communications. The Premier League and UEFA financial fair play rules, which apply to all clubs, essentially require clubs to operate on a self-funding model, in particular for the PL impact of players' investments. In the last three windows, we've invested significantly in our playing squad in both terms of transfers, contract extensions and player wages, including twice breaking our transfer record. This has been done with the full support of our owners who regularly, who are regular visitors to the club when? and our matches. When? And they're in contact with us in a, on a daily when? basis. When? As a club, we're confident we can reach our goals to compete for and win the major trophies but recognise this will take time and hard work take in what time. is one of the most competitive markets but take in the time. world. I'll be dead by the time that they deal with that. <laughs> no, hopefully you won't be. No, I mean, no, hopefully no. You won't I be. thought you said you, hopefully you will be. <laughs> no, hopefully but, you won't listen, be. Listen, no, 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 no. Right. When, when has Stan been to an Arsenal game this season? I don't know. I don't know which He hasn't been there <laughs> because no cameras have even picked him up. I don't it, think he's been to a no, game. No, he hasn't. Thing. No, I no. don't think he's been to a game. Absolute I think, rubbish. I, I think that's like he's attended a lot of games, but you know. He's, yeah, when he's attended games before he used to get they booed and chased they out. They haven't said when those games were. Exactly, you know? not this season. So, do you reckon that he picked up the phone after we got slapped by Liverpool? Like it says there, he picks up the phone every day, rung Unai and said, "Oh." Well, says they speak to on a daily no, basis. No, rubbish, well. rubbish, <laughs> rubbish. They You're need not to, having it. No, I'm not having it. They need to put money into the club. Like I said, at the end of the day, right? If they would have done it from day one mm. and showed what their ambition was, and Arsenal fans would have been more, you know, what I mean towards mm. him. But he didn't. He literally came in and just took, and it's like ripping the heart out of the club. Mm. And it was hard enough moving stadiums in in the first place for a lot of the fans. And you only have to look now, right? Mm. Even against Manchester United. Historically, one of the biggest fixtures in in England. Mm. There were empty seats. I don't give all this Friday night or any... Listen, 10 you years ago, the... there was empty seats, Robbie. Listen, you're playing Manchester United. There was empty seats. 10 years ago, right? Or let's just say... Stan Kroenke was an owner that was throwing money into the club and we were buying world-class players and we were challenging and everything else, mm. right? Would there be empty seats? No. No. Now, at the start of the season, we've been every single game, right? We went to Singapore. Mm. We went to Ireland. We went to Sweden. Then went into the season and everything else. And there was hope. There was optimism. There was a buzz. There was a a vibe around the stadium again because there was fresh fresh manager, fresh ideas. We bought in players, albeit whatever mm. the price tags were, we bought in players. So there was this whole sense of, you know, like, yes, everyone felt good. You went into that first mm. game against Manchester City, stadium was packed out. We lost 2-0. Did you hear anyone groaning? Did you mm. hear anyone moaning about let me, it? Let me, no. just, let me just put this though, let me just put this though, right, on, on the sort of, not even necessarily devil's advocate, just basically... You sitting on a fence. No, do we have to be patient here? Because when I read, there was another article in the LA Times. So let's just hear me out now, right? So this is this is Stan Kroenke. This is Stan Kroenke. And I know he's been at Arsenal a lot longer, but this is Stan Kroenke when he arrived in LA, right? So th this article was in the LA Times, yeah? And again, they were bigging him up. But you, if, you, if you read this article, they were bigging him up, but... It says, when he arrived, obviously Stan Kroenke they're talking about, when he arrived in St. Louis, um, he said he'd do a lot of things. A sceptical Los Angeles shrugged. The Rams won four games and became the butt of national jokes. But here we are, two seasons in, and those pledges are actually beginning to come true. And this was written before, this was written at the start of the season, before they even got to the Super Bowl, yeah? Kroenke said he'd build a new stadium. He's doing that. It will cost $3 billion. 
Construction was delayed, but the Inglewood Palace will be open in two years. Inglewood Palace, <laughs> right? He said he he said he would bring a Super Bowl here. He did that. Inglewood will host Super Bowl, um, the Super Bowl in 2022. Um, he said he would build the Rams into a team that will compete for championships. That is also happening um, with uh, Kevin Demoff the Chief Operating Officer and Vice President of Football Operations and General Manager Les Sneed working the controls. They put together a team favoured by some to represent the NFC in the Super Bowl, which they have done, right? Um, and then this guy goes and say, it all starts with Stan. He has the vision, said Sneed. Uh, uh, sorry, this is uh, the the um, manager of the club. He goes, it all, it all starts with Stan. He has a vision, says Sneed. He empowers us. He expects us to bring the vision to fruition when he steps back and lets you do your job. So could it be that there could be, you know, if he did win the Super Bowl, there could actually be a positive knock-on effect to Arsenal where he looks at Arsenal and says, well, you know what, I did it with the LA Rams. When I first moved the LA Rams from St. Louis to LA, everyone laughed at me. Everyone said it couldn't be done. Now I'm building this brilliant stadium. I've now put LA Rams back on the map as one of the major forces now in American football. Now, you know what? Now I'm doing a similar thing with Arsenal. All right, I haven't thrown wads and wads of money at it, but I put in... Arsene Wenger's gone now, who who's, who's did a good job in the time building, but now it's next level time now. So I put in Unai Emery. I put together a team that are proper know what they're doing when it comes to transfers. Some of these guys in the past have not done what they're supposed to have done properly. They've not, they, their sort of old fashioned way of doing things hasn't been good. But now I'll put in a new dynamic team, Sinelli, the, these sort of guys, we're going to get proper transfers in. And if everybody at Arsenal's a little bit patient, we can be competing again. We've got top quality players in Lacazette, Bamiang. These guys now, I've tasked them when the summer comes to help sort out the defence. There's better deals coming in. Because even you said at the start of the show, there's reasons to be a bit optimistic because when the summer comes, that window you was talking about. So do we... We know what's gone on in the past. We know what's happened. But should we look kind of look at this Super Bowl and then start to look at it and say, well, you know what, maybe... That shows that there's a bit of hope. He actually owns all of it now. He owns all of um, Arsenal. So surely if somebody owns all of something, you're not going to want it to just flop. He's not going to want to see fans from England always getting on his case. You know, um, people saying, yeah, you've done brilliant in LA, but in England, I hate your guts. He's going to want maybe a bit of that to rub off in England as well. So could him winning the Super Bowl be something that is really helpful to Arsenal could be something that pushes Arsenal to the next level as well. That's what I'm, you know. No. <laughs> but you've got to be, no. you know, I think you've got That was a great speech. Well done. That was great. All right. It's no I'm doubt. Just saying. Collect I'm just... your check from Josh tomorrow. It was, look. I'm just saying. No, no, no listen, it, listen. No, no, it, it, my I'm issue trying is this. Like, like, wait, 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 wait. I've got to say one I know thing. We, we, it's, it's, easy, it's an easy thing. For everyone to just say, yeah, Cronky out, I ate him, what, right? And we know, but sometimes we have to dig a bit deeper in it. And just, I'm not saying right. it's going to be, but I'm just saying, my, my could issue, that be a turning my point issue, if they won the my Super Bowl? Is, my issue is this. Stan Cronky's not been here for two, three years. And you've got to give him the benefit of the doubt. Stan Cronky's been here more than 10 years. He's been here long enough to say, this is what I need to do. It's not he was here long before the LA Rams. He was long before. We were his priority. We were his club. Well, I don't know about if he was No, no, but because he remember, been. he had there should have been. He had the St. Louis Rams. They were in St. Yeah, Louis. But so what he I'm still saying had is, the St. Louis Rams. What I'm saying is, he had the Denver Nuggets, his basketball team, which by the way, they're doing pretty decently as well at the moment. Well done. Whoopie do. Throw the ball in the hoop. Good so maybe could it be a turning no, point? No, no, no. Because do something here. Do something here. Don't talk about it. Don't sit there and say, I want Arsenal to be in the Champions League. Yes, that's my vision for Unai Emery. We'll back him. Give him the money. If we have got £200 million to spend this summer, 
whether it's not your money, it's not your money out of your personal pocket. If we've got 200, don't turn around and say, here's 100. Go and get what you can out of it. Give him the full 200. Because then as fans, we can't say nothing. We but can't look at turn. LA, he's put together a team there, hasn't he? He's bought in these guys. But he's put in his own he's money. He's put in together, as well as the money though, he's put together a team that's building a championship team. And now they're in the Super Bowl final. I'm just saying, now he's sort of putting together his team now for the first time ever, isn't it? He? he sort of inherited, he, he's, he bought Arsenal and he sort of inherited um, Arsene Wenger. He's inherited all the old system that was there. And at the time we was, you know, top four, doing all right and everything. But now for the first time, he's got, you know, Arsene Wenger and all the old regime's gone. He's had a complete clear out there and bought in all these people now, you could say. Because now he owns the yeah. whole club. And what did I say to you? This Could summer. Could it be another LA summer. Rams scenario? No. Well, we don't know. But I told you, this summer. That's why I said this summer is the key. There's no hiding place. Okay. If, if we've got 200 million to spend, and I keep using that figure because that's, you know, there or thereabouts. But if we had 200 and he said, here go and I, here's 100. No. No, no, no. Where's the other 100 going? What are you doing with that? We, where's, where's it going? If we've got 200 to spend... Stadium? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but if we've got two hundred to spend, give the man two hundred because if we sit there as fans and we can go, you know what? Can't say nothing against um, Kroenke because he gave the manager two hundred million and we failed. Then you've got to look at the manager. You've got to say mm. if a manager has been given because you've got to remember we don't need a huge overhaul in a sense of you know we need goalkeepers, defenders, midfielders, strikers. We've got two of the best in the league up front. Two of the best. The reason why we're in contention for the top four is because of them two. Nobody else, them two. They're the reason why. Mm. Two players in double figures already. So you imagine if you put a structure behind them. And you and I still don't think that Aubameyang's been played to his strength. Mm. I still think that he's been played out of position. I still think that he hasn't hit the ground running yet. And the goals, the guy's running for the golden boot. The guy scored 25 Premier League goals quicker than Thierry Henry and Ian Wright. Mm. That's no mean and we, feat. And there's still... You can call him. This for another show. There's still some fans who's oh, don't... No, like, no, no, listen. You can call him a tapping merchant. You can call him it doesn't a matter. Gabonese goals. Jamie Vardy. Yeah, it, goals. You can call him all these things. You are not educated in football. This At the end a, of the day... One of the best strikers in Europe. The reason why... Still. The reason why Aubameyang has so many tap-ins is because of his movement. He's in the positions. It's movement. It Aubameyang doesn't stand there. It's not like we're playing in the park when we were kids and one of you would goal hang. Let me just stand by the goal and... No, Aubameyang's movement is what gives him tap-ins. Mm. He moves away and defenders can't pick up his movement. It's not that he's just pe no, no, getting tap People say that's ridiculous. It's his movement. Mm. It's the way he does things. Well, we're going to find out in the summer um, what happens with this. But um, listen, listen, let me get your predictions. <clears throat> for um, Manchester City versus Arsenal. <laughs> Can I give you my heart and my head result? Yeah. My heart tells me we're going to win 2-1. <laughs> what you does your heart a, say? You might need a heart transplant. <laughs> Do you know what? You know the best thing? Look, 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 look. look. I'm, a, I'm a new watch, yeah? I've Ooh, actually... Oh, new watch. He's got a new eye watch. I, yeah. Look, 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 look. look. It's, uh, I've got my heart rate. <laughs> And, uh, it's a at and just, the moment, when you at said the moment, that, it, when you said that, it just went off the scale. Do you know? Do you know the funniest thing? Do you know the best thing? Right, I'm currently sitting on 60 BPM. Right, but have a look at it. Oh no, I'm on 70 now. I'm getting wound up. But look at this little graph here. Yeah, do you see the spikes? Yeah, that was when we was talking about Cronky. <laughs> So you saw my heart rate was going through the roof. So imagine what it's going to be like tomorrow. So your, so, heart, so your heart says two one. Yeah, and my head says we're going to lose by about four or five. Okay. Oof. And um, <laughs> what does your heart and huh? head say? My heart says we'll lose. No, sorry, sorry, my head. <laughs> yes, I'm confused. <laughs> yeah, your heart. No, my head says my head says we'll lose two three one. But my heart says, and actually, and a little bit of mixed up, they cause they lost to Newcastle. Nobody expected that. That's and, the worst and, result. For no, us. but you know what? I think if Unai Emery goes there, and I think he's capable of doing this and really putting in a really good defensive performance, <laughs> we could get a draw. <laughs> I could see a draw. I could see a draw. I can't believe we've been that you know, because, sentence. Good 
defensive performance. Well, that's it. That's, that's the problem. But if we could put it... I think we scored there. We scored even... We even went to Anfield when no one was scoring there. We scored. So, but it's how we defend. We could get a draw. Prediction number two, LA Rams or the Patriots? Patriots. All day. What, your heart says what? Yeah, I'm going to go out this weekend and try and find a Patriots hat or a top or something and then post pictures all online because it'll make me feel better. You hate her. Yeah, your good. Owner, good. Your owner's in the Super Bowl final. I finals. don't care. Represent. I don't care. His hair looks like a Super Bowl. It looks like that's how it was cut. <laughs> there big bowl on top So you're not backing round. the LA Rams? No, no. Why should I? He ain't backed us. He don't care about us. Show us something and then I'll, I'll show some support to the Rams. I don't care. Fuck the Rams. Don't care. I hope they're all crying at the end of the day. And then they might feel a little percentage of what we feel as fans. Because no doubt on Sunday, we'll be walking outside of the stadium at, at the Etihad crying because we've been slapped. So why should I then go home and be like, yeah, let's watch them all smiling and happy. Super Bowl. Fuck your Super Bowl. Hope you lose. Hope you get stuffed. <laughs> on that note, we're going to leave it there. Listen, thanks for watching the show. Um, don't forget to download. <laughs> oh my God. Don't forget to download this podcast. Um, available on all formats. And we'll be back next week. And uh, it's going to be an interesting weekend. Arsenal versus Manchester City. And then the Super Bowl final LA Rams versus the Patriots. The Stan Kroenke Derby? What? Derby Day? What do we call it? Stan Kroenke Day? Go I don't away. know what we call it. Go away. <laughs>